A freshly converted Muslim confided that he wanted to apologize for the atrocities that Islam has committed against the non-Islamic world, or Dar el Harb, for 1400 years that continue on to today. For example, in Indonesia, three teenage girls were beheaded on their way to their Christian school. The note left behind reads, We will murder 100 more Christian teenagers, and their heads will be presented as presents. Then my friend realized, of course, that he couldn't apologize on behalf of Islam because he is no longer of Islam. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it is what has come to be called the church that owes those in the grip of Islam the apology because the truth has been obscured through a fog of unsound church tradition. All Christians believe, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But when it comes to the figurative language of dreams and visions and prophecy, it isn't surprising that there is a little consensus. Because of end-time doctrinal tradition, the church can't seem to even imagine that a man that has led his people for 1,400 years specifically in the spirit of Antichrist could be the false prophet mentioned in the book of Revelation. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Muhammad leading another 1.5 billion to their graves today with shirk manifest in specific declaration that God has no son being the most important fundamental in Islam. So how is that the church's fault? When you point out, for example, that Islam has been engaged in imperialistic bloody conquests against the non-Islamic world for 1400 years, Muslims point out that some Christians have had some history of doing the same. They pretend to not notice that imperialistic bloody conquest, sexual enslavement of women taken as spoils of war and such, are what describe the 1400 years of Islam, the Quran, and the example of their prophet Muhammad. At the same time, they ignore that imperialistic conquest, whether the Crusades, the murder of millions of Christian reformers at papal behest, or ethnic cleansing campaigns carried on by random reprobate megalomaniacs, is the very opposite of Christianity, as can only be properly measured by God's holy word. Christians are given two most important commandments. And thou shalt love thy Lord God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. The most violent thing Jesus did was overturn the tables of the money changers. In other words, men that call themselves Christian, that act in a manner that is the opposite of the commandments that we were given by Jesus Christ, are engaged in unchristian behavior. How can we spot a Christian? that ye love one another as I have loved you. Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins as how much he loved us. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. While coming to the aid of the helpless is a Christian duty, those men that believe they had authority from God to offer absolution to other men for participating in the Crusades were exposed by the fruit of that campaign, which eventually even included cannibalism. How would one expect men to behave if they believed that, regardless of whether they engaged in rape, pillage, or plunder, they would nonetheless be absolved when standing in judgment before their Creator? This is not unlike the Islamic homicide-suicide bomber that believes he will go straight to heaven for blowing up a busload of Jewish school children, for example, and thereby avoid the Quranic required pass by through hell before going to heaven and also be exempt from Allah's good-bad scale. His survivors even throw a party for him, believing that his heinous act provides propitiation for the sin of 70 of his nearest and dearest friends and relatives. Few prizes are greater for Islamic murderers than Jews. In the Hadith we read, Jews will hide behind the rock and tree, and the rock and tree will say, O servant of Allah, O Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Muslims deny that God sent his only begotten son as a sacrifice to save us from our sin, even though they well understand the concept through Muslim so-called martyrdom. So-called because a Christian martyr says, I will die for what I believe in, but the Muslim so-called martyr says, you will die for what I believe in. 
While a surah regarding no compulsion in religion is found early in the Quran, it is later abrogated by over a hundred verses that suggest violence against non-Muslims, such as, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, smite ye above their necks, and smite all their fingertips off them. In stark contrast, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. The first century church was circular with all participating. Constantine declared himself the first human authority in the church, introduced a Greek sophist-style pulpit-pew relationship, and recast the ecclesia, or assembly of the called out, to be understood as a church building. But elders are exhorted, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. How much less understanding of authority has there been in the Protestant church by indoctrination with a scripturally unsound tradition? Rather than sticking with the traditional continuous historic context that virtually all Christians and Jews understand in regard to Old Testament prophecy fulfillment, they abandon a consistent approach in favor of the pop doctrines of preterism and futurism for understanding New Testament prophecy. These doctrines were invented by 16th and 17th century Catholic Jesuits in an anti-Reformation effort. Though the Reformers didn't buy it, the doctrines did find their way into the 20th century church. Yahoo Preterism, Alcazar, Futurism, Ribera, Darby. This isn't a secret. When you do that search, you'll also notice that the traditional continuous historic view of New Testament prophecy has been hijacked by two cults that both claim the Catholic Church is Antichrist, even though according to all of the verses that use the term, the Catholic Church is the exact opposite. Satan has even made his way into modern Bible versions. Most modern versions are based on a corrupt 19th century minority Greek text written by two individuals. Yahoo, Westcott, Hort, Satanists, Blavatsky. The enemy has done a pretty thorough job. Is the modern church that different from a generation of vipers before it, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye? As a former futurist, I apologize to Muslims for allowing an unsound doctrine to blind me to the plight of 1.5 billion souls lost to Islam today. I praise the Lord that he opened my eyes to the reality of Islam's denial of God's Son and even that Jesus died on the cross. But how can Muslims be expected to find the truth with church so-called leaders like one pope bowing and praying toward Mecca from inside a mosque and another kissing the Koran, the very book that curses Christians and Jews for believing in the Son of God? Jews call Uzera Son of God and the Christians call Christ the Son of God. God's curse be on them how they are deluded away from the truth. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That they said in boast, we killed Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, but they killed him not nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them, for of a surety they killed him not. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Jesus is who we will be facing in judgment. To my Muslim could become brethren, why not come into the light, the love, and the peace of the one true God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Please visit IslamandTheTruth.com for an introduction to the Gospels and IsraelAndBibleProphecy.com for the text version of this video.